and anointed altar workers. Praise, faith, unity, fervent desire, and anointed altar workers. Most importantly, we must possess and manifest what we wish the candidate to receive. If we want the candidate to speak in tongues, we ought to be able to speak in tongues. How can we expect a person who doesn't have it to do it if we who have it cannot? And so there needs to be spirit flowing. Holy Ghost should be able to be at liberty and be flowing. When you, I, I'm not saying that you can impart the Holy Ghost to someone, but surely there's an anointing there that when you're praying around with someone uh, and, and the Holy Ghost is moving through you, uh, they ought to be able to feel something. There needs to be anointed praying going on so that there uh, will be a liberty on the part of that person to get involved. Now, this brings me to a great point. I love, and this is why, I love a noisy altar service. Amen. I'm going to tell you why. I think it's important. The old Pentecostals are loud. Let me tell you why I think a noisy altar service or a loud altar service is important. Because it covers up and it takes away the intimidation of the candidate. Right. Uh, we're telling this person, hey, cry out to God. And if they're the loudest thing in there, were they going to be uh, timid and, and probably uncomfortable? They'll shut down. But when worship and praise is like thunder in here and the Holy Ghost is moving and we're singing and worshiping and people are crying out and praying, right. then they're kind of covered up and they can be at liberty to open themselves up to God and they can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the Lord is. There is. And so uh, when the worship and praise is really rocking, it, it just tends because because if there's like if, if we're saying, hey, come on and, and cry out to God, and all you hear is them repenting of what they've done, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna be closed in. Right. Uh, so if you're if you're loud, then let's them get a little louder. So uh for us to be effective altar workers and have an effective altar service, two basic things need to be established. We need two, two things we're going to talk about real quick. First of all is God's anxiousness, his apprehensiveness. When someone receives the Holy Ghost, they have not overcome God's willingness to give it, but have received rather his gracious gift. The Bible says uh, the Bible is very precise that the Holy Ghost is a gift. And so in fearing that the purchase and payment has been made for by another. <coughs> when someone receives the Holy Ghost, it's not like you, you talk God into it. Right. He, he, the Bible says it's not his will that any should perish. Right. He yeah. said that he wants to give you the kingdom, the Bible says. So all of the bucking and the kicking and the jerking and the snorting and the moving about or whatever a person might do. Understand that when someone's doing these things, that is just a process of the flesh dying on that part of the individual. That flesh is, is trying to come under subjection to God. And, and that stuff, that doesn't enhance the Holy Ghost. If I sit here and go, that doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, that's not going to help me get the Holy Ghost. But that might be just a way that I'm bringing my flesh under subjection. Uh, my wife, I, this is just me, uh, but my wife will tell you if I'm praying in the house, uh, she'll come and put socks on me, on my feet. Uh, sometimes two pairs because I have a bad habit of when I'm just trying to get in touch with God and I'm laying out on the floor, I'll kick my feet till they bleed. And uh, that, that doesn't increase the presence of God for me. That's just my flesh. I'm just trying to get in that zone. And that's just something that I do. So people will do different things. And it's okay. Everyone's different. Just like everyone has a different personality. But understand that it, that's not enhancing the Holy Ghost. Uh, God's not going to take you, brother, and, and throw you through that wall. And then back through the other wall. And, and, and throw you across the room into a visitor, visitor's lap. I don't recall that being the holy, that 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 if you can't control it, it ain't of God. If you can't control it, it's not of God. Uh, you can you can stop speaking in tongues, and you can start speaking in tongues, right? As the Spirit gives the others. Now, this business of just instant, everybody speaking tongues, I don't know about all that. Uh, 
but everybody's different. So anyway, in, in other words, uh, when a person receives the Holy Ghost, they've not defeated God's reluctance. Uh, they, they haven't overcome God's hesitancy to give it. Uh, but they've simply reached a point where they believe that the gift is for them and they receive it. So that's God's anxiousness. Now let's talk about the candidate's hunger. The person, when I say candidate, we're talking about the person who's come to receive the Holy Ghost. Unrepented, undecided, unprepared people is a major restricting factor. Folks, I do not care how many times Someone comes up to this altar. I don't care how long they come up to the altar. But you cannot pray folks through that do not want the Holy Ghost. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. right. You can't pray folks through that haven't repented. Right. You're trying to give them talking tongues and nobody bothered to see if they repented first. Exactly. Yep. Right. Amen. Uh, so be careful also that you don't push so much and and, and put so much pressure and, and be so hard on people that a person won't want to come back to our altar or our church again in the event that they're not ready at that time. Uh, and, and that's one of the most uh, tough positions, I think, that the church faces today. We're, we're eager to pray for folks. We're hungry to pray folks through. We, we're, you know, it's, it's an exciting thing. We're all fired up and, right. and our people are fired up and zealous to win folks to the Lord. But we can push too hard, too fast, and they won't come back. Right. Uh, the idea is to be, and, and here's your mindset, be willing to pray for them, be anxious to pray for them, excited to pray for them, but you can't force nobody. Right. Uh, right. Never, somebody say that word never. 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 never go get anybody and bring them to the altar for the Holy Ghost unless you are positive that God has told you to do so. And I know that's tough sometimes. But you, you can't shake the Holy Ghost into nobody. Uh, and, and, and going and getting them. Uh, whenever the Lord hasn't drawn them. Uh, isn't going to help neither. If anything it might be discouraging for them. Uh, we, you know, we love our children. And you do not treat your child's birth. As some haphazard event. But we won't train medical personnel. We want the best facilities when a child is being born. Uh, we want uh, to be careful. And likewise, in the kingdom of God, this is God's treasures. And we want them born in the best condition uh, that can be provided. There is no substitute for trained personnel. Right. I promise you. We want to know what we're doing. I was preaching a revival one time, and, and finally a lady came to the altar, and, and she was kind of, you know, they had them wooden altars, and she was kind of giving this, Brother Daniel. She was kind of leaning on the altar like this. And, and I don't know what possessed those guys to move that bench. Uh, but she was, she was up there, we're praying with her, and she leaning on that wooden altar and had her hands up. And then boys just came, and I, they just moved the altar. And down she went. Fell down, and... She got up, dusted herself off, said, I'm okay, raised her hands. God filled her with the Holy Ghost. But I said that to say this. Uh, we can help matters and we can hinder matters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to talk to you, and this is going to get a little humorous. We'll wake you up here. I'm going to talk to you about some natural things that can hinder folks from getting the Holy Ghost. Uh, and I'll just say that a little courtesy and kindness can go a long way. Right. Uh, the Bible says... Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Uh, you know, some people, whenever they uh, talk to you, I'm going to give some examples so you know what I'm talking about. Some people, when they talk to you, they have this tendency to get right here in your face. And, and, and the face might not be familiar, but the breath is familiar. Right. And so... And, and, and you might take a step back and they take, they take a step forward. And you, There's a reason I'm backing up and he just steadily coming. Yes. <laughs> My point is this. Let's be courteous and kind and brush our teeth. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> or put a mint in mm -hmm. something before church 
This is, I know it's humorous and we're all, but you, man, oh, yeah. I promise you, they're not in the spirit like you might not be. And they are very well aware of fleshly, natural, carnal things like this. And, and, and then also, you know, while I'm at it, whenever I'm, uh, ears usually don't smell. Ears are made to hear. Come back. So when I'm praying for someone, I want what I say to end up. Let's give a real example. I want what I say to end up here. Yeah. Okay. Not here. Yeah. Okay. And so what I'll do is instead. Now, if you're in, I know, I know. We get carried away. We're in the zone and we're just, yeah. You know, but ideally, ideal situation, if you're going to pray with someone and speak to them. Yeah. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. And it, it, that way, if I haven't done the things I need to do breath wise. It won't be near as bad. <laughs> Maybe you brush your teeth and then went to McDonald's and had onions on the burger. I don't know, but right. but if you, I, I'm just as effective right here as I am right here. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so we need to acknowledge the fact that we need to take care of our breath because that's I want the ears to be the place where what I say ends up. Uh, natural things can hinder. And ultra service. Sure. And then there's body odor. God rest her soul. Sister Margo, she'd be plump proud to know that I was using her. Uh, <laughs> she would. But this, we were praying. First church ever pastor, brother. We were praying. This, this cat down here. And, and, and Sister Margo come up and, and she's going to pray. She threw her hands up. And the cloud hit me, and it wasn't a glory cloud. It wasn't the Shikana. And, and, and you know, it just kind of made me. I literally had to turn my head and It was bad, folks. Put deodorant on. Amen. Because, do you think it, that you would have been, you'd be surprised at the people that want to lift it. And sometimes it's the person you pray with, you can't help that. But us folks here, you know, the team, right. we need to brush our teeth. <laughs> we need to put our deodorant on, maybe even a scarlet cologne or something, a perfume. You know, and, and, and it wouldn't hurt if you didn't look like a witch. Right. Being honest. Right. But now tell me something. You come up with the Holy Ghost. And I lift my hands and pray for you. And you know, it's that smell. That's going to hinder you. It's going to hinder me, I promise you. I ain't looking for no Holy Ghost. Yeah. I'm trying to get out of there. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. We'll try again later, you know. So we need to take care of some of these things. You think it don't matter, but I promise you it does. They're not in the spirit. Uh, they're very much aware of the natural. i tell you something else that don't help. Come on, Cameron! No. Cameron! Can you hear me now? Right. If you're praying for me and you start screaming in my ear and clap, I'm all for clapping. You clap over here, you clap, you woo -wee. But don't be clapping in these people's ear. These are things that hinder people right. from getting up. They're not focusing on God, I promise you. They're like, ow! And don't scream in their ear! Right. Because if you're close, they, look, they, I know, I, I understand the music, what we're rocking here, and people are, it's like thunder, we're right? having good church, altars rocking, right? I promise you, they can hear. Get in their ear. Another good reason or excuse to get in their ear. But the clapping, and look, don't spit on me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Right. You spit on me, the service is over for me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, who has lost love? Okay. Thank you, somebody in your head right now. The main one. Maybe it's your daddy. Maybe it's your mom. I don't know. 
that man will, he, they, he, they, you finally get them to church. They finally come to the altar. And you're like, it's do it, God. And I mean, your tears are flowing. Their tears are flowing. They get up here. The person to work with them starts. Come on, Jesus. Wow. Now tell me where that hands in the Holy Ghost. Wouldn't that break your heart? Yes. Okay, well, let's not do that. Let's be careful. These are things that hinder us. Um, oh, goodness. Had a pastor's wife one time. Lady come to the altar. She's seeking the Holy Ghost. I don't know why. I can't answer why. But the pastor's wife lays on top of this woman. Just lay on her. She, she just come on and hollered in her ear. My wife, my wife, she she was seeking the Holy Ghost once, believe it or not. She weren't super saved before. <laughs> Lady went and started punching her in the stomach in my line. Now I'm not talking what you think. I'm talking about balling her fist up and saying, Woo! I'm like, man, I don't want to be putting cost me spend to beat people up. <laughs> now you show me that Bible where that's beneficial to anybody. No, no. Folks, God can do it, but we can sure help matters. I promise you. Now, I know some of this is humorous, but this happened. This stuff has happened. And contrary, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to mess with your theology. Contrary to popular belief, I can't. You cannot shake the Holy Ghost into anything. Come on, yeah. Woo! You got it yet? You got it yet? And I would love this if this were the case. But you can't massage the Holy Ghost into anybody. Sometimes why we go to church. Sir? Sometimes why we go to different churches. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't massage the you can't massage. Let me tell you something, especially nowadays, you gotta be careful how, when, and where you touch folks. Right? Yeah. Even the same sex. Yep. Yeah. Tell me. And, and here's one that kills me. Okay? You can't break their neck and then get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes. Come, on. Yeah. Come on. There's only so much <laughs> pressure that Cameron can take the night, but I'm barely touching him. He's, he's helping me out. There's only so much pressure a person yes, can take sir. like that. You, by you, if you do that to me, I'm focusing on what you're doing. If you're spitting on me, I'm thinking, I just got to spit out. <laughs> if you're screaming, I'm thinking, please shut up. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and so these are things that we get, we got to be my, if you stink, I'm smelling you. I'm not thinking of Jesus down on the floor, Lord, give me with the Holy Ghost. I'm like, Lord, get him away from me. <laughs> Seriously. These are things that we can do to help or hinder we laughing, but it happens in our altars. <laughs> so what happens, instead of helping someone get the Holy Ghost, we hinder someone from getting the Holy Ghost. Right. These days, I'm just going to pastor's right and I'm wrong. But I think it's okay. Just me. Two, if you're a guy, if you raise your hands like you're praying, you know, this should be fine. This is biblical. And this should be fine. I have his wrist. I'm pretty safe here. Eh, so the back's okay, you know. I, I think. Now, if, 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 would you raise your hand? You, thank you. You're done. You've received it. Amen. You know, now here's a lady. And so, and I've seen some crazy stuff. Yeah. But you know, I think this is okay. Whatever pastor tells you, you do that. But I think this, I'm not holding her hand. It cannot be mistaken for, you know, woo. And, and here, don't touch her. No, guys. Guys. No, whatever you say, I don't know what you teach her. But for me, that's what I teach. Don't touch her nowhere else. Amen, amen. Right. Well, I, I Nothing have, else is safe. Amen. I have told them this, this, this outside shoulder. There you go. But. Anything else work? No, no thank I, I've seen a dude, I kid you not, walk up to a woman. Right here. Mm -hmm. 
if it was my woman that she did that to, yeah. Yeah. And she certainly is out of the picture for the Holy Ghost at that point. Yes, sir. So we have to be careful. Is and well, like I said, whatever Pastor says goes. We have to be very careful where we touch people. Amen. Not only for your sake, their sake, and their spouse's sake, or right. to the limit right. can't you touch my daughter. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, there should really be only one person giving instructions. Right. One over here saying, hold on! Hold on to what? This one over here saying, turn her loose! Turn loose to what? What am I doing? But if one person's giving the instructions and, and there might be communication back and forth, it, it's understood, it's simple, it's plain. Don't be back and forth with instructions. It's, it's kind of like a, a, a football team and you have plays for running. This is, a, this is an effort here. We know what we're doing. This person is leading them somewhere. That making sense? Uh, and if you come in in the middle of that and, and maybe they already repented and you're saying repent again, you know, which is it? Mass confusion and chaos, and God is not the author of confusion. Right. right. Um, so only one person should be given instructions at any particular time. Uh, now let's settle the gum issue. <sighs> I don't know how somebody can speak in tongues with gum in their mouth. I'm not that spiritual. I have literally, and it's all how you talk and deal with people. There was a lady who had gum in her mouth, and she's singing the Holy Ghost. Like, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I said, ma'am, you want the Holy Ghost? What are you doing? Is that gum in your mouth? <laughs> Would you do me a favor? I guarantee you it would help you. And, I don't, and I, don't, I don't care. I'm trying to, this is what I was born for, man. I want this person to get the Holy Ghost. She spit it out in my hand. I just turned her hand to my wife. <laughs> she loved that. <laughs> but if I'm gonna pray you through, you gonna get the Holy Ghost camera before we leave here. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna pray him through, it's just me. If he allows it, whatever. But I just don't see. Come on now, Holy Ghost. And you sitting there smacking, chewing gum. Right. Uh, no. At. Uh, Pretty self-explanatory. Um, so what must a person do to receive the Holy Ghost? I'm glad you asked. So if we're going to help someone, we need to know ourselves. And if we don't know how ourselves, how can we truly help someone? So first, obviously, they need to be believing, right? Believe now. Folks need to believe for the Holy Ghost. Uh, can't go no further than that if you don't believe. Secondly, they need to repent. Um. We've said for years that God won't dwell in an unclean temple, that he wants that temple clean. Right. Um, they need to be worshiping or praising. Praise should yield to worship. That's another story. And they need to yield. That's basically what a person must do to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They believe, repent, worship, and then there's a time when they yield to the Spirit. And as an altar worker, and this is this is your this is one of your uh, greatest responsibilities. You've got to be able to discern the candidate's location, spiritual location. I talked about that earlier. In other words, where are they? And I don't mean physically. Uh, when you walk up beside them, you don't just jump and immediately attack them. The Bible says, "Lay hands on no man suddenly." Right. But ease up to them, maybe. You know, stand there for a little while, see what they're doing. Are they praying? Are they repenting yet? Are they believing? Kind of watch them, gauge their temperature, take a spiritual pulse, get an idea of what is going on with them. And so, uh, and let the Lord direct you because he will. Uh, you can sense where they are in their approach to God. Are they almost ready to receive the Holy Ghost? Are they believing? Have they repented? Uh, but don't just palm people uh, on the head. Uh, but discern the candidate's spiritual location. There's nothing worse than going to pray for someone to receive the Holy Ghost and they're not there for the Holy Ghost. Right. They might be there for healing or want to tell you to pray for somebody else and for some other reason and you're trying to pray them through. Uh, we need to know what we're doing and how to do it. Uh, you can look 
at a person's countenance and discern if there's unbelief or not, usually. Uh, are they repenting? No one, no one should have a hand laid on their head to receive the Holy Ghost that has not been led to repentance. Right. Amen. Yeah. You got to lead these folks to ask them. It's, and, and it's like we're scared to talk to people. I, and you can stop them from praying. They're not going to just fade away. I can find out more about where they are by just talking to them than praying with them half the night. Right. Right. Uh, it, and, and repentance don't take two days. It don't take ten hours. It could be a matter of minutes. Uh, you know, I, I like to and quote Bible to them. That helps too. Now, I like to let people know, excuse me, <coughs> that if you ask, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Uh, and the first thing I tell them, hey, do you, do you want the Holy Ghost? Let's repent. I'll even say, let's do it together. And I'll repent, Lord, forgive, because they, they might not know what that entails. And they'll hear you saying this. And, and, and it's okay to say, hey, you know, God, I want you to. Cleanse me. Take my sin away. Make me a new person. Is that how you feel? Yes, sir. Well, come on. Tell them that. Open your mouth. I tell them out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. They'll not speak in tongues if they don't open their mouth. Right. Right. Thank you so much. And so, uh, after they repent, then you can lead them into worship. They need to open themselves up to the Spirit. They need to open themselves up to the Spirit. Um, I've never seen, this doesn't mean it can't happen, but I've never seen anyone receive the Holy Ghost with their fist clenched. Right. That's just something I've observed. Right. Agreed. Uh, anyone I've ever seen receive the Holy Ghost had their hands open right. uh, because what's on the outside is a reflection of what's going on on the inside. Exactly. And when a person is knotted up and tight Bold up. The Holy Ghost usually doesn't come because what the Spirit of the Lord is. But when you open up to the Lord, the Spirit can begin to flow through them. So one important that you, thing that you can do is get them to open up. If they are bound, uh, they're probably not ready for the baptism of the Holy Ghost as far as being knotted up. Uh, but when you open up to God, the Spirit will rush in. Are they believing? Are they yielding? So now yielding it's one of the most important parts of receiving the Holy Ghost. A person uh, drove up to a yield sign one time and uh, had a wreck. And the officer said, lady, you didn't see the yield sign? And the driver said, yes, sir. I yelled as loud as I could, and he still hit me. So it's not a matter of yelling. It's a matter of yielding. It's a matter of coming to the point where the flesh submits to the spirit and that's what yielding is. You can say, Jesus, I love you all day long. Or you can release yourself in the Holy Ghost and begin uh, to speak as the Spirit gives the utterance. The Bible said they spoke in tongues. <clears throat> this business that the Spirit is doing the speaking is incorrect. Uh, the Spirit doesn't speak. The Bible said they spoke. The, the person speaks. I had a lady one time come to the altar for the Holy Ghost. And, uh, you know, we encouraged her to let God have his way. Let God speak. Come on, open your mouth. Use your tongue. Speak. And the lady stood there. And I kid you not, Brother Daniel, she, she gave her this. She opened her mouth. The Holy Ghost ain't going to grab your tongue and go, uh, 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 and do like, and don't do that. You know how I've seen people do that? You know you can't give the Holy Ghost. I keep saying that. Right. You, did this here, people hitting the chin. What is wrong with you? I wish I could grab his tongue and just, uh, I mean, you might feel that way. You might really want them to get the Holy Ghost, but you are not the Holy Ghost baptizer. No. But yielding is when they have repented, they're believing, they're worshiping, and they're uh, clapping and, and whatnot. They're claiming the promise, and they move from that flesh into the spirit. So they spoke with tongues as the spirit gave the utterance. The spirit brings the sound, the utterance, the language. Uh, but they must know it's going to be their vocal cords. Yeah. I'm telling you this because people get caught up all kinds of different ways. Yeah. So if you experience this, let people know it's going to be their tongue. It's going to be their vocal cords. They must do the speaking. Uh, they must project it out of their mouth. It comes from them. Instead of thinking that God's just going to take over their facilities 
And, and that's just something that you can't control. Like I said, if you can't control it, it's not of God. God is a gentleman. The Holy Ghost is a gentleman. He's not forcing himself on anybody. Uh, the Spirit is subject to us, the Bible says. And so uh, when we yield ourselves to God, we submit ourselves to God. It is a mental decision that I'm not going to say what I want to say anymore. I'm not going to do what I want to do. I'm giving myself to the Holy Ghost. So how do you help someone receive the Holy Ghost? Well, you encourage them to focus, consecrate, concentrate on Jesus. Uh, common things that you could say that are short bursts that kind of help this happen is, hey, get your mind on the Lord. If it's a child, I encourage them uh, to do as my grandmother told me. Just close your eyes and picture Jesus up there on the cross dying for you. And usually that'll get a child's attention. They can focus on that. Or you're someone who has... What's that label we give out? ADHD, things like that. Give them something to focus on. You know, hey, he's hearing you right now. He loves what you're doing. He's accepting what you're doing. He's excited about your tears. He's receiving your worship right now. He's looking at you right now. Jesus is seeing you. He's hearing you. He's close by you. You can feel it, you know. These are things to tell folks that will encourage them. Uh, and you can encourage the seeker to tell him, tell him how wonderful he is. How much do you love him? And uh, this is the greatest thing you, you're ever going to do in your life. You're never going to regret what you're doing right now. But just encourage the seeker, uh, much like you would a young child who, who is doing You You know what it is. You felt it. You've had the Holy Ghost. But this is new to the, this person. And so uh, it really is like a child uh, for them. Uh, quote Bible. Can't go wrong there. The Bible says if you ask, God's faithful and just to forgive you. That's a, a go-to. Uh, if you repent and are baptized in Jesus' name, you'll receive the Holy Ghost. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Ask and you shall receive. These things encourage people. A lot of times they just need encouragement. That's all. Uh, they need to stand on the promise of God. He'll give you the Holy Ghost. It's promised. I've, I've prayed for candidates before, and they'll tell me, you know, I do real good for a little while, and then I, I, I can't say what I want to say, so I stop. We're killing ourselves over here, and you're stopping. You're holding back. And so I'll tell them, listen, next time you can't say what you want to say, let that go. It's okay. But we want to be understood. Let, let me. So someone's speaking the Holy Ghost, and they're saying, hallelujah, hallelujah. And that tongue starts to give way. And I'm, I'm just giving an example. I'm not making fun. But that tongue will start to he'll, he'll go from hallelujah to something like, Hallelujah. He'll, he'll kind of stutter that out. We have spoken, well, most of us have spoken English all of our life, you know, or we want to be understood, and so we start pronouncing it. So we go from hallelujah, and we're starting to hear that, that tongue, hallelujah. No, that ain't right. You go back, hallelujah, hallelujah, and they're giving it more authority in that. Don't do that. Encourage them that. It's probably not going to be English or it's not going to be Spanish or whatever their native tongue. It, it, you know, it don't matter what it sounds like. That's what I tell them. Just let that, let your tongue go. Let the, let the, you know, a lot of people need help in that intermediate stage in, in that, but between that English and the heavenly language. They just, that, there's a, we'll talk about it more later. I call it no man's land and I'll explain that. Uh, but we want to enunciate, and so you're not going to understand it. You just let it happen. And, and so um, how do we do it? Well, now this, this is just me. Uh, Brother Daniel, if he tells you different, he's right. But only certain people should have the authority to lay hands on folks. Amen. The Amen. ministry, and maybe a few others that know what they're doing, elders of the church, uh, can pray for anyone, anyway, but I wouldn't put my hand on their head unless you have permission from your pastor. Uh, so here's how it works. Our prayer warriors and altar workers will begin to pray with someone, and when they, they feel that that person is ready, maybe they'll summon, summon a minister. Uh, once they feel faith is right, once they've led them through repentance and they're worshiping, they feel they're ready. And they'll get the attention of the pastor or minister. And uh, at that point, it's the climatic point 
uh, to where the minister will lay hands on their head, and everyone in the church already knows they're fixing to get the Holy Ghost. It, it's tongue, it's a done deal, it's tongue talking time. But I have found that if you're constantly giving it this, off, 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 off. That person's thinking, well, he just did this and nothing happened. So it, it takes the significance of it. This should be a faith thing, a faith builder, right? But if you're constantly on, off, on, off, on, off, nothing happened the last 15 times you did that. Yeah. That's what this person's trying to think. But I think whenever it's there, you're ready, you're feeling it, you, you, they've repented, they're right there at, at the Holy Ghost, maybe they haven't stammered lips. When you feel led to do it, then you palm their head. Mm -hmm. And then you begin to, 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 to pray for them. To me, that's how it's... A, ideally how it should work. And it might not happen. It might take two or three times. But this business of constantly on off, on off, on off, I don't understand that. What why are we doing it? What's the point? Um it loses its significance. The Bible says lay hands on no man suddenly and I think that's probably a lot to do with why. <laughs> so are we okay with time? Yes. Okay. Um, when we put our hand on the head, it ought to be go time, in other words. So it's okay to assist them with their transition from the flesh into the spirit. A lot of people stop at repentance, and I'll tell you why. <coughs> Even your other non or your denominal churches will feel saved after repentance because the Lord actually forgave you of your sins. And you'll feel that lift, and you'll feel better, you'll feel clean, you'll feel good. That's not the Holy Ghost. The only evidence of the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost, they're going to speak in tongues. Right. Right. Uh, but encourage them not to stop at repentance. They'll feel good. It might stop. So that feels great. I've repented. Yeah. Keep praying. God has more for you. Don't tell them you're going to hell, or don't tell them you ain't spoken in tongues yet, so you don't have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, uh, you know, speaking in tongues isn't the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues is not the Holy Ghost. But that lets you know that person just received the Holy Ghost. They will speak in tongues when they get the Holy Ghost. Um, but it's okay to let them know that that's just forgiveness that they feel. Uh, so in the conclusion to all of this, uh, we should be excited. We should rejoice with them when God fills someone with the Holy Ghost. Obviously, congratulate them. Uh, but always let them tell you they got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right, amen. It don't don't tell don't don't tell them that they got the Holy Ghost. Uh, but now someone may have no idea, and I think it's okay to. Hey, did you feel this? Did you did you maybe speak in a language you didn't know and, and kind of lead them that way? But just walk up and hey, you got the Holy Ghost. Uh, now I I have a bad habit of, of telling someone, hey, that's it, that's it. I'm not saying that's it, you got the Holy Ghost. I'm saying what you're doing is right. What you're doing is it. Keep doing that. You're doing good. Uh, that gets confusing sometimes also. So something to be uh, aware of. Um, one way to do it uh, is to say, hey, did anyone receive the Holy Ghost here tonight for the first time? Speaking in other tongues. Lift your hands. Uh, but we don't definitely don't tell anyone that they got the Holy Ghost. Um, I've prayed with people that have almost passed out, heard them speak in tongues, and then they get up and say, well, I guess I'll get it next time. They didn't know what was supposed to happen. Uh, they didn't know what they were doing. The Bible says we're made overcomers by the word of our testimony. Uh, to me, that means the Holy Ghost come in, and until you testify publicly that I have it, that door's shut. That's just... I, I think that they need to admit it or confess that, hey, I got the Holy Ghost. I have the Holy Ghost. And you can kind of hear that door shut. Amen. Uh, so that's how we overcome the flesh and the devil. Uh, we need to take, we need to make a big deal out of it when someone receives the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We really need to make a big deal out of that. And there should be a process of Bible studies that follow and information, uh, uh, converts class, something uh, that can can bring these people up. It's the worst thing for someone to get the Holy Ghost and then you just leave that baby alone to fend for themselves. Mm -hmm. Can't do that. Um, 
some churches. Well, we'll, we'll wait and see if they come back to see if they really got it or not. Right. That's spiritual usury. Right. right. If they repented and they spoke in tongues, folks, that is the Holy Ghost. Uh, don't complicate things. A lot of times we tend to complicate matters. And a lot of times, if you hear them speak in tongues and they turn to you and say, man, that was wonderful, but don't really say they got it, they're waiting on a response for you. And in that case, you're standing there, you've been around this, and if you don't know they got it, how do you expect them to know they got it? So there's that side of the coin also. Uh, something needs to be confirmed at some point, is my point. Uh, so praying, uh, praying with someone to receive the Holy Ghost. You have to stay encouraged. You cannot be discouraged and pray people through to the Holy Ghost. True, amen. Uh, it's very simple to get the Holy Ghost. It's a promise. Uh, it, the only time the Bible says that they tarried was in Acts 2. Uh, so it's something that needs to be settled in our minds. God made a will. Look at it like this. A testament is a will. The will has been authenticated. The tester has died, so it's in effect. The promise says, ye shall. He will pour his spirit out. He shall baptize you. He shall give. He shall receive. Out of your belly, shall. And so we have to identify with that promise. There is a will, but who is it made out to? Whosoever will. It is conditional upon our response and our faith. So we identify that the promise is mine. It's easy to receive the Holy Ghost. Don't make people struggle for the Holy Ghost. Right. They'll get in this syndrome, a chronic seeker syndrome, uh, and it's hard to get out of that. Uh, you, you don't wrestle and struggle with God for the Holy Ghost. It's a gift. Right. I'm going to tell Cameron, Cameron, I want you to come mow my yard, and I'll give you, well, it ain't $20 no more, is it? I'll give you $50, you come mow my yard, okay? And so Cameron goes, and he mows my yard, and he comes up to me and says, Oh, please give me a 50. I need that 50. Please, please, give me, give me, give me. Please, can I have a 50? Hey, 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 can I have a 50? If you let go of me long enough, I'll reach in my pocket and give you the 50. <laughs> and that's how it is. God has promised the Holy Ghost. He promised the Holy Ghost. He's not a man that he should lie. Believe that. Know that. And know that he wants to fill these people with the Holy Ghost. There should be no doubt in your mind that God wants, and it don't matter what they've done, yes. he can forgive them of. Right. Yes. Don't care what you heard about it. Yes. Yes. If you can't pray them through, let somebody else get up here. Come on, amen. I'm trying to preach. <laughs> but it's easy to receive the Holy Ghost. No way that... Uh, uh, 3,120 Jews in one day could receive the Holy Ghost if it wasn't simple. That's right. True, amen. And Luke 12 says it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What is that? That's God's attitude towards the person that's trying to get the Holy Ghost. Right. It's his good pleasure. Yep. That's how God feels about the seeker. Most of the time it's not an issue of if the person's even ready or not. They can repent on their way to the altar. If there is no barrier there, then there's no reason that someone cannot receive the Holy Ghost. If they repented, they don't have to arm wrestle God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Okay? So that's God's attitude. What's the recipient's attitude? Right. Are they really hungry for God? Mm -hmm. I Again, I, I can talk to someone for a few minutes and do more for them towards getting the Holy Ghost than just praying with them half the night. What is their hunger? Start to talk to them about Jesus. If you see tears start rolling down their face, you know they're ready for the Holy Ghost. Right. Um, do they understand the power of the name of Jesus? Tell them, say, speak the name of Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Yeah, just like your child or, or your spouse. God likes to hear it whenever you tell them that I love you. Uh, you know, nothing can stop the name of Jesus. These are good things to say. A lot of people just don't recognize the Holy Ghost. A lot of people just don't recognize the Holy right, Ghost. Right. How many gods are there? So, and there's one spirit of God, right? Yes. Well, what's the name of that one spirit? Jesus. Okay. 
So we're calling on the name of Jesus. And this new convert is saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And all at once, he feels the presence of God. Now, does he say to that presence, I need the Holy Ghost? No, because that is the Holy Ghost that he's feeling. That's not something that's introducing him to the Holy Ghost. There ain't but one spirit. That's God going. Hello. I understand you want to visit, you know, let me in. And so, uh, that, you know, that there isn't, if God's a spirit and one spirit, there's not a spirit for healing, spirit for blessing, repentance, and a, a spirit for the Holy Ghost. Anytime someone feels the presence of God, he's being introduced to the Holy Ghost. It's that simple. A lot of people feel this presence and they say, oh God, I need that. I want that so bad. No, you're there. Right. You just have to get to a, a, a place where you believe that it's for you and accept it. Need to recognize it. If they don't recognize it, they can't receive it. Right. They got to recognize God there. Uh, when they feel His presence, that's not something that's waiting to introduce them to the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost. Now, usually, they'll weep. Not all the time. Not all the time. I've seen people get the Holy Ghost without crying. I have. Usually, they will weep. They will cry. And when they're weeping and they're in His presence and they feel His presence, uh, that's the Holy Ghost that they feel ready to come in. And sometimes you have to tell people this because they just don't know. So here's the issue. They think if they feel God's presence that they're going to get an, in, in, an introduction to someone that they can ask for the Holy Ghost. A lot of times that's the issue. Understand, no one is going to get the Holy Ghost 10 minutes away from the Holy Ghost. No one is going to get the Holy Ghost one minute away from the Holy Ghost. Right. They have to say, okay, this is God. This is the Holy Ghost. This is what I want. And that's how people receive the Holy Ghost. Sometimes people are bound or intimidated, and you have to tell them, hey, raise your hands. This is a universal sign for us. Yeah. A lot of times that helps. That's five times whenever they lift their hands, you notice a lot of people just start, that's a point where people will start to get the Holy Ghost. Yeah. They surrender. A lot of times that helps. Uh, I've seen them walk people. I've seen them stand people up. Of course, God can do it any way, anyhow. Uh, but these things just tend to help. And it's okay to talk to people that are struggling. Don't let somebody struggle for the Holy Ghost. Don't let them just struggle and struggle and struggle. Don't let someone stand there and chatter. Right. Chattering is not the Holy Ghost. Right. Why would you let them just continue to chatter? It's okay to stop them. Chattering is not a language. That's not tongues. They will never, they can chatter from here to God comes back and still need the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So it's okay to stop them and talk to them and redirect them. Say that. Redirect them. Redirect them. It's okay. I don't know why we got thinking we can't stop some. Oh, if I stop them from praying, they're going to quit praying. Yeah. Give them some instruction. Yep. But you have to know where they're at to be able to give them instructions. Yes, sir. Uh, so here's the issue. Um, one lady was seeking the Holy Ghost for two years. And she'd go to the altar and she would just chatter. And she had been chattering for two years. I stopped her and I said, look, just open your mouth and talk to God. Stop all this chatter and just talk. Speak to him like I'm speaking to you right now. She would still be chattering today. So it's simple to get the Holy Ghost. Children as, as young as four years old that I've known of, maybe you know someone younger, have received the Holy Ghost. So it's got to be simple, but we complicate things. <laughs> Understand his presence. Create a liberty to worship. Um, like I say, maybe walking them around will free somebody up. Have a cousin receive the Holy Ghost that way. Raise their arms. Say, Jesus, I love you. So there's a difference in, and I tell them this, you know, put some art behind it. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, that's a great start point. But it's somewhere, hey, put some, put some feeling behind it. I love you, Jesus. I guarantee you, if we started saying hallelujah to Jesus, instead of just saying hallelujah to Jesus, if we hallelujah to Jesus, hallelujah to Jesus, if we started doing that here, I'd have to stop teaching because we'd start to feel the Holy Ghost. Right. Yeah. I challenge you, say I love you, Jesus. Put some love behind it. To mean it when you say it. Yeah. I used to think no one could get the Holy Ghost, like I said, uh, with, with their face in the pew, but that's been proven wrong. You used to think no one get the Holy Ghost with their eyes open. That's been proven wrong. 
Everyone's different. So, you know, don't force someone to do it your way. If they're comfortable doing it, let them do it. So next is what are they expecting? This is big. This is big. What are they expecting? Here's where a lot of people get hung up. Uh, someone got up to testify, praise God. 56,000 years ago when I got the Holy Ghost bright light hit me, fire hit my left leg and fell over on the floor. I didn't come to it for three hours. But thank the Lord I'm in the way. And that's a great testimony. But likely someone seeking the Holy Ghost just heard that. And they feel like if I don't get see this bright light, if fire don't hit my leg, if I don't fall over to the floor and don't come to for three hours, then that's not the Holy Ghost. Right. 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 Yeah. This is true. So you got a new convert praying for God. He's waiting on this bright light first. What then? He never sees that bright light. Get a flashlight. So they get hung up thinking that it's going to be done a certain way. Someone sought the Holy Ghost for five years. Finally got the Holy Ghost set up and said, if I'd have known it was that easy, I'd have got it the first night. Pastor said, well, why didn't you? I heard all these testimonies. Waiting for this to happen and that. He said, I knew where I was. I knew my name. I knew what I was doing. I thought I'd be off in some other world somewhere. And people can get that concept. Someone said, I got knocked flat on my back. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. That's only a bonus, folks. That's not the Holy Ghost. Yeah, right. There's only one thing for sure that we know they do when they receive the Holy Ghost. They will speak in tongues. Right. Yes. Some people pray with others. Uh, don't even recognize that they talk in tongues. That's all they're going to get. Like the Holy Ghost. That's what you're looking for. That's the signal. If they get the Holy Ghost and are allowed to continue praying for the Holy Ghost, they'll get frustrated and confused. Did you hear what you said? I'll help you with it. We're praying for Cameron again. And I'm here, and we're praying, and Cameron starts speaking in tongues. Stand guard over Cameron. Woo, 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 woo. And I leave him, and here comes Pastor behind or somebody else trying to pray through the Holy Ghost again. And he just got the Holy Ghost. So now he's all jacked up. Wait a minute. Did I, did I get it? Why is he? Why is he? So it's okay once they pray through the Holy Ghost to kind of stand guard over him. Be like, Rejoice with them. Let them know. You know, talk to them. But if you if you leave them, right? Yeah. Mass confusion and chaos, right? Yes, um. Or I mean, it's okay to leave. But if you see someone going to pray for them again, walk up to them. You got it. You got it. You got it. No. It's team effort, right? Right. Let them know what's going on. How they're speaking to. Them. A lot of communication should be done at the. If you're not seeking God or praying about something for yourself or someone, a lot of communication should be going on right now. I'm not talking about, talking about what we're going to eat at the church. Right. Right. A lot of communication should be going on at our altars. Amen. Amen. Uh, you got to recognize the Holy Ghost. When people talk in tongues, that's the Holy Ghost. It's the only biblical sign. And new people don't know what it is. So you ask them, did you talk to them? Did you say something you didn't understand? They'll tell you. A lot of times you don't have to, though. They'll tell you anyway. Uh, is talking in tongues the Holy Ghost? No, but that is the initial sign of the Holy Ghost. Right. One girl was a pagan, and she looked pagan, too. <coughs> Walked in off the street. She had not been baptized. She was about 18. She didn't know anything about the Holy Ghost. Talked to her and said, hey, is this what you want? Yes. She started praying, I love you, Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Somebody came up to her and said, Now, if you come out, you get the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't let them do that. And, and, and they don't have to talk in tongues for two hours. I know some people only said a couple words in tongues. And they went on to be pillars of the church and pastor at their own church. So this business about whether they, well, they, I want them to get a good dose. Is there a bad dose? 
Well, I want them to get a good experience. Is there a bad experience? All you're looking for, if they start talking in tongues, mission accomplished. Amen. Well, that's the beginning anyway. That's really when the work should start. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, how long they, do they have to talk in tongues? You get caught up on that stuff and people are different, personalities different, you know. There's going to be fruit. But let me tell you what you can do. You need, whenever visitors, what are they praying with Holy Ghost your job is to connect with these people. Right. Take them out to eat. Buy their lunch. Be a friend. That's how you grow a church. Exactly. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, you're not going to just get an influx of people off the street. Tomorrow, a hundred people probably ain't going to just show up. Right. right. But one at a time, yep. you win somebody. You win somebody. Yep. And, and stay connected to them. Well, they miss, man, we miss you today. Exactly. Well, we sure had good church. Right. It ain't his problem or, or, or his job to do that. Sheep beget sheep. Yeah. yeah. Amen. 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 It's your job. Amen. I don't know where that came from, but that, it's your job. It's your Amen. job. So what are they expecting? And I'm trying to hurry. Uh, usually they listen to the wrong. I'm sorry, I offended you. They, they listen to the wrong people, and so they're expecting something different. The only thing we know for sure they're going to talk in tongues. The Bible said that they spoke with tongues and magnified God. So apparently part of the time they spoke in tongues, part of the time they did not because Peter understood uh, they did not talk in tongues all the time. So if they talk in tongues just a little bit, just a couple words, I call it good. And I continue people to continue this experience. I tell them, hey, you're going to do this every day. Every day you already try to do this. Uh, you can't work for it. You can't be good enough for it. Uh, and then the devil puts people on guilt trips. If you're watching, always watch. We have this habit of giving it this and we're praying for somebody. Well, if you're doing this, you don't really know what they're doing. Right. It's okay to watch and look. Exactly. And you can look at the countenance on their face. A lot of times they're doing real good. And all of a sudden... They're like, I love you, Jesus. And then I go, mm, I remember what I did last week. Yeah. Yeah. Encourage him. Hey, he's forgiving you of everything. He loves you. Just love him back, you know. Um, you can almost see that on the face, though, when they're praying. And, and they can't get the Holy Ghost while they're on a guilt trip. Right. I believe in restitution. I do. Uh, but you don't have to go back and restore those watermelons that you stole 15 years ago from old Johnny on the street corner who's probably dead. I said that to say this. Some stuff has to go under the blood. Exactly. Right. Right. Some stuff just has to go under the blood and be covered by grace and mercy. Uh, people must understand that if they repent, if they confess and forsaken their sin, Jesus will wipe it away from the record. Uh, it may be in their memory, but he only sees the blood. Aren't you glad? Amen. Amen. I, my wife will tell you this. I prayed a guy through one time over the phone, standing on my bed. I, I was going to bed. This guy calls, and, and next thing I know, I'm, I had him on speaker. You should have seen him. My wife walks in the bedroom. I'm standing on the bed on my phone, hollering at the phone. And he's speaking in tongues. It was an unbelievable experience. That, that did happen. Uh, prayed for a guy so long. One time his wife got the Holy Ghost. That happened. But in these cases, it's not a matter of us holding on and holding on that God finally broke through and gave in and gave him the Holy Ghost. Broke through what? What can keep, you know, what's powerful enough to withhold God? Take a sinner that comes down to the altar and weeping. Can anything stop that guy? From having his sins forgiven? No. No. Any, any, nothing can stop God from giving people the Holy Ghost. Whose hearts are right and reaching for him. And these examples that I've given you. Uh, you know what really happened to those people? They wore their resistance down. Yeah. Saying hallelujah a hundred times really fast like you're angry isn't what gets the Holy Ghost. Surrendering is what gets the Holy Ghost. They commit to it, they accept it, and that's the two things they do. Now, I told you we we're going to discuss this. We're talking about the transition of the Spirit. Getting from here to the Holy Ghost, 
a lot of people get hung up in what I call no man's land. God doesn't talk in tongues. I know it's a shocker for some of us. Uh, had one comfort come up. She walked up. She stretched herself out, opened her mouth, said, God, Holy Ghost. She just held her mouth open. That didn't work because God don't talk in tongues. Uh, whose praise is it? Who is it that's loving and praising? It's our praise, right? So when we get the Holy Ghost, we're the ones doing the tongue talk. Right. As I said, he gives it the others. Uh, I've never been speaking in tongues. I've said this a couple times because it's important. I've never been speaking in tongues and couldn't stop. I, the time I didn't want to stop. Uh, some people can get in a trance. Some people seen angels. I've 100% felt them. Uh, but I have to live within what God's given me. In other words, your experience might not be the same as mine, but we have to live in our experience. Um, and you can transition into tongues, but you can, as long as you're in the spirit, it can stop and start uh, with you. Uh, the Holy Ghost is a spirit, it's not a tongue. So as we praise God in English, we surrender to the language of the Holy Ghost. That's not making words up. We don't make words up. We surrender to the language of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but people stop in this, what I call no man's land. They start in English, and the end result is tongues. But to get from here to there, there's this, Isaiah talked about it, this no man's land. He said with stammering lips and another tongue. So stammering lips. Generally, stammering lips is in the dimension of speaking in tongues. That person's trying to break through from the flesh into the spirit, and they're beginning to loosen up. They're losing control. They're letting God have more control. And you need to encourage them to go on through and re just release your tongues. Let words flow out, like I said earlier. Right. Uh, if they get stuck, it's okay to stop them from praying and give instructions. Stammering lips is not speaking in tongues. Right. It's not a language. Right. I've personally not seen much fruit from long altar services. Now what I mean by that, I like long altar services. I'm talking about Someone who's seeking the Holy Ghost. Right. Making them tarry for hours. Uh, not talking about the altar call, but praying with seekers. And, and you know, also, it's hard to maintain unity very long. Let's just be honest. Yeah. Um, and in the natural, the mother has a lot to do with the timing of a birth. That's why doctors instruct them when to push. That mother can help that baby come on. And in the spirit, the church is the same way. Uh, there are some people who walk down the altar, raise your hand, they'll start talking in tongues like that. But 90% of the people will, will, will stammer. And there is a difference, as I said. 90% of these folks will, will spend some time in that no man's land, be it a few seconds, minutes, or however long. But stammer is not tongues, or, and it's not English. Uh, a lot of people will say someone got the Holy Ghost, and all they did was have stammered lips. No, no. Know the difference. Right. Tongues is a language. Yes. Uh, stammering, yeah. Uh, it, stammering is, is just an intermediate area. So uh, when they get to this intermediate area of, of stammering, they'll stop. And as I said, it'll go from hallelujah to hallelujah. <laughs> and they start enunciating, like I said. And, and so this is when you stop them. Let them know that, hey, look, let's talk. I want to explain to you what, what, you're, what you're facing, what you're going through. You're right there. I tell them, this is as close as you ever get to the Holy Ghost without actually getting the Holy Ghost. You're right there. Our brain and our lifelong thinking becomes an issue at this point. It's saying English or whatever the native tongue is, but we want to be understood. And so we fight a carnal nature to get the Holy Ghost. Think of it like this, Brother Daniel. Think of a diving board. Okay? And it looks so fun and, 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 and inviting until you get up there and realize how high 30 feet is. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and your nature is saying, head up, feet down. Your nature is saying, English. And we fight our flesh to get through the Holy Ghost. That part of the old man dying is our thinking. And so we come to the end of the diving board and the brain is saying, it's head up and it is feet down. That's where surrender is. Doesn't matter what it feels like or what it sounds like. 
Just let it happen. And once people accept that the Spirit is there and their language is changing, they'll get the Holy Ghost. God will work with them if you let him work. God doesn't need you, doesn't need music, doesn't need me, doesn't need anything. It's simple to receive the Holy Ghost. But don't let people struggle. Why? Because if they pray half the night and then finally get the Holy Ghost, you're telling the next one they have to pray half the night. Right. If they're watching, if someone is there. And I've seen people hit the altar night after night after night. It took one dude 15 years because they fought and struggled with God instead of recognizing, okay, this is the Holy Ghost and I'm claiming it. So the transition of the Spirit is where you lose a lot of people. Uh, if you can just explain to them where they are, this is what is happening, it makes a world of difference. And uh, you have to decide which one you want to talk in. <laughs> you want to talk in tongues or English? You can't do both. If the Holy Ghost is there, you can talk in tongues. And the final thing I want to discuss, and I'm done, is complete surrender. Amen. Complete surrender. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know of a time that this did not work. This, a lot of people, you know, people are simple. Put things simple. We complicate things. Yeah. Uh, definitely write this down. If, if, if you've been praying for someone to receive the Holy Ghost and, and, and they haven't done been able to do it yet, try this. Uh, there are some who really struggle, but there are three questions you can ask. And if they answer them honestly, right honestly, have to be honest, they can receive the Holy Ghost. Real simple. Three questions, and I, you know they're, they're praying, and they just can't get through. I'll stop them, and I'll ask them. I say, listen, I want to ask you three questions, and I want you to ask this honestly. Does God give the Holy Ghost? That's number one. Does God give the Holy Ghost? You know, we've given this Bible study before, and there'd be people who needed the Holy Ghost at these studies and they've received the Holy Ghost around this point right here. It works. I promise you. Number two, will he give it to me? Or actually you say, will he give it to you? So question number one, does God give the Holy Ghost? I answer that honestly. Go to the next question. Question number two, will he give you the Holy Ghost? If they say no, we'll have to Start over. We'll have to re reconfirm some things for them. But if they say, does God give the Holy Ghost? Yeah, I know he gives the Holy Ghost. Will he give it to you? Yeah, I believe that. He'll give it to me. Number three, will he give it to you this instant? I promise you, when they answer that truthfully and honestly, the Holy Ghost will come. Have, have, uh, you know, we've repented. We're praising God. We've recognized that he's there. We've accepted it. We've yielded to it. And it is that simple. And I promise you, church, God will work with you. And remember that people are different. Personalities are different. Mentalities are different. What may work for one might not work for another. But those three questions do help. Uh, does God give the Holy Ghost? Yes. And you can watch them. You can tell if they're being sincere if they don't believe it. Because they're like, mm, and they'll go ahead with it. And you got to keep them there. Plow through it with them. Does God give the Holy Ghost? Will he give it to you? Will he do it this instant? When they say yes, lift your hands. He's fixing to give you the Holy Ghost and try to pray him through. Uh, remember in the end, it's God that gives the Holy Ghost. He can give it to anybody, anywhere, any way, anyhow that he so chooses to do so. But I promise you, we can help and we can hurt. Yeah. Are there any questions? Anyone? Yes, ma'am, you're in the back. So you're asking me what say you would say to someone. Yes, if they're asking you, I don't know what to say. Like, what should I say to push forward, to get closer to seeking the Holy Ghost? Well, the first thing is, like I said, we all know repentance. Mm -hmm. If they're not sure what they should say as far as that, you let them know what repentance is. Okay. okay? The Bible says that if we ask, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. 
And I tell people, just whatever sin you can think of, whatever pops in your head, ask them to forgive you of. Don't be ashamed. It's okay. It's between you and God, you know. And so that's why a lot of times I say, I'll repent with you. Let's do it together. And then I will repent. Lord, forgive me of my sin. And usually they'll say, similar to what you're saying. And again, we go back to the Bible. We have to believe what the Bible says. If this person asks, God is faithful and just to do it. And you stand on that. Then, and I tell you, you'll feel it, and you'll know, when that transition occurs, and you encourage them now, let's praise God together. A lot of times they'll mimic you. And at some point in that, they'll kind of start venturing their own thing. When that really, it's like a, you ever washed your hands? I know some of you probably have that. But, <laughs> you get that soap. The Bible says godly sorrow work its repentance. It's kind of like that soap. You build it up. That lather starts to come up. You're building something. It's the same thing. And eventually they'll get carried away in their own. But you encourage them. Hallelujah. Is, I, I, this is what I tell them. Hallelujah is the highest praise. And so I'll, I will say hallelujah to Jesus. Come on, that's it. Hallelujah. Use your mouth. Speak. Out of the abundance of the heart and the mouth, speak. I love you, Jesus. I praise you. And I say, whatever you feel, you just tell him. Talk to him. You just tell him. So kind of, it's a, it's not a recipe per se, you know, two cups of this, pinch of this, 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 gets you this. Because everybody's different. Right. Uh, depending on that person, where they're at, like I said, judging their location, what they need. If you see that they're just following what you're saying, then you would encourage them. Tell them. Tell them yourself. Tell them how you feel. Is that how you feel? Tell them how you feel. So it, it's a very part. It's not for everybody. Right. This all the work in business is not for just anybody. Right. Right. This is huge. This is huge. Right. Exactly. This is a huge ministry. Amen. Mm -hmm. I hope that helps. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. You you in the cheap seats. You know those those seats cost just as much as these. <laughs> so when you're in that position, what she's talking about, where you're kind of leading them and worshiping and repenting. Are you in the same physical position of being next to them where they hear you? Do you stand like to their side and let them hear you that way? What's, what would you say is the best? In a Pentecostal altar service, it can get crazy. Yeah. People sometimes are everywhere. But ideally, it's okay. easier if you're about right here. Okay. And, and, and you can... Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Another thing I just thought of. The reason people do this we're trying to hold their hands up. Yeah. Not weigh them down. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know, we don't yeah. we'll encourage them to lift their hands. Help them. Do, give it this. Give yeah. it. Of course, women to women, men to men, of course, you know. But to answer your question, he said, I mean, you can do this, whatever works, because every case is different. But ideally, you want where you can see them. And so you're right here saying, hey, you know, whatever needs to be. So I, I would imagine that this general area. And that way you can assist with this. You're right here to do this or this or whatever needs to be done, you know. Someone shouting is going to knock them over. You can kind of give it the Pentecostal, hey, yeah! Wall, you know. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're awesome. Any other questions? Oh, come on. Thank you. I have a question. Wait. You're the smart girl, huh? <laughs> um, so what do you do in maybe a, a busy altar call when there's a new convert praying? Typically when there's a new convert praying and crying, everybody wants to surround them, everybody wants to touch them. Um, what do you kind of in that, situ in that situation, or maybe somebody who's not necessarily a minister in the church, and I got to them first and is talking to them, how do you kind of contain the situation or damage control to kind of go about that? Like I said, Every situation is different, but what you just described, uh, take what you can, and if this person, they might know what they're doing, it might work. Uh, if they leave, take over. But I still wouldn't give two instructions. And if you hear that they're not giving them right, use your brain, kind of kind of help God. It's, it's, it's touch. I had, I had this happen, sis. We had a lady in our church. You know I'm going. We had a lady in our church. Lady in our church. Our church. And a pastor had 
pastor's wife are visiting from another church. And my wife is praying for this lady. This lady took my wife's hand off of our sand and replaced it with her own. And y'all have to know Sister Paul. But in that case, Sister Paul wanted a skull dragger outside, right? You can't do these things. So, in this, you know, a situation like that, what you'd like to do, you might can't do. So you just deal with it as best you can. Sister Paul did the right thing. She, instead of making a big to do, and this person leave thinking, oh, that calls me crazy, you know, trying to fight them up to each other. Or, you know, uh, we, we, we won't, it's a baby. Always remember, that is a child. That is a baby. They don't. So treat it as such. In, in that particular instance, there I don't think is a, a, a real clear-cut way to do it. If that, that, this is also why I say if you're praying with someone for the Holy Ghost, you need to stay there and pray with them. Yeah. And if you're the ministry, if you're the pastor, you preach, you're trying to get to everybody in my talking about. But I'm talking about altar workers, laymen. If you're praying with somebody, stay with them. And, and that's one of the reasons why I kind of guard over them. But like you say, if someone's beat you there, you know, kind of do what you can. If they leave, and if they're kind of rambunctious like that, they probably will walk off. But be listening. Have they repented? So if that person walks off and they repented, that's done. You know that's done. You know, where, where else, where are they at? Are they believing? Have, have, have. One of the worst things you can do is keep people praying who are obviously ready to quit praying. Yeah. And, and you can recognize this. You can discern this. You know when they're like, you know, okay, you know, they're not. And like, oh no, keep going, you know. Don't do that. But I don't know if that helps. But it's a very good question. It's, it's a, it, it's touchy. It's all very, very touchy. Um, really. Well, I don't have a question. And sometimes you can maneuver yourself in between them and that person classy without causing a big disruption. You can just kind of move in the spirit and move in between the two people easily. Without. I think it matters who it is, and I think it matters what they're doing. If they're just giving you, giving horrible advice, definitely kind of get in the way. I, I definitely would agree with that, you know. Uh, but they're giving good advice, let it, let it be. They get crazy. And then also you can tell the pastor, too. That's what the pastor. He's telling him to repeat after me and say the Lord's Prayer and all this presence. You know. And let, brother, let the pastor, let him handle it. I've had that situation where somebody was telling me, this is how you speak in tongues, and we're going to just go duck and remember that same person. Yes. And we had to let, I yep. let my husband know when he went and handled it. Because yeah. I tell him how to speak in tongues. And I did it after church. Well, I didn't. Way. Nobody else did. We went to that was, and let the pastor do. Yeah, you, know, you can't teach them when I speak in tongues. I'm sorry. But after church, I went to them and I explained this to this, this person. Uh, so there's a way you can do it tactfully. I think tact is very important, uh, especially if there's visitors around. You on the second row. Now, at what point, because, you know, we do know that they all, uh, and, and of course, sometimes it might be, they need to be water baptized first to receive this. But if they get it, I always ask, have you ever been baptized in Jesus' name? If they say yes, it was in Jesus' name, kind of re reconfirm that. If they say no, listen, let me show you this, you know. Uh, I would do it as swiftly as possible. That's just me. That part of the process. Uh, you must be baptized. Baptism does also save you, Peter said. And in Jesus' name, of course. And sometimes that's a confusion. Well, I don't remember what. And he's right. I'm wrong. There ain't nothing wrong being baptized more than once. If they're unsure, let's do it again. You know? Uh, that's what I, I tell folks. But definitely immediately point them towards the water. That, that's, yes. So in your, your four steps, you talked about believing, repenting, and repenting. Yeah. Um, Surrender your tongue because the tongue is the most unruly part. So I'm like, surrender your tongue, ask God to like control your tongue and all this stuff. 
where would be the best part to, to tell someone that? Like in the repentance or the believing or like the yielding stage? Definitely, like what would I tell someone definitely in the yielding. Okay. Definitely in the yielding. Because it wouldn't make sense for them to do it yeah. before they repented. Yeah. Obviously in believing. After that space of repentance, <clears throat> sorry, y'all. After that space of repenting, and they're praising, and and you can kind of so you got to watch them. That's why I, I never understood the. Yeah. Or the you know, you gotta watch them. Discern the location, where are they at, and so if you watch them, you can kind of tell how close they are. Is that tongue starting to give? That's why I've never experienced what I've experienced here at your church last time I was here with the with the Spanish. Because to me, I'm watching. And to your point, I'm watching the tongue. And it's given what I in English would say, oh, okay, let me listen to that. <laughs> nope, that ain't. And, and then I would get, I'd get, is that it? <laughs> Yeah. It's like, no, nah, he ordered Taco Bell. I don't know. <laughs> but, because I'm watching the tongue. Yeah. Um, and listening. And it's harder to listen in our services sometimes. But I'm watching and listening to the tongue. And so, that, if, if they're chattering or if they're stammering lips, it's super easy. You know. Go for the juggler, right? But if they're in that intermediate right there, that's really when you want to push that. That's why I say, hey, it don't matter what it sounds like. Let it come out. It ain't going to be English if they speak English. It's not going to be English. It's not going to be your language. It don't matter. But we want to be understood. And that's weird for people, especially the unchurched folks, people who are not Pentecostal folks. Really odd, right? And so I think we encourage them to, that's where the let that go comes from. Let it go. Let your tongue go. Kind of like what you were saying. Uh, don't try to control it. Just let go of God. And it's going to sound funny to you. It's okay. And, and stop them if you have to. And tell them this. You know, it's okay. It's going to sound funny. It ain't going to be English. Don't stop that. That is the Holy Ghost. Because, like I said, you have to remember, what they're feeling is the Holy Ghost. That's not a spirit that's in an introduction to the Holy Ghost. That is the one spirit of God. Not going to your heart store saying, let me in. Right? So that's what they feel. And you just kind of help them transition, you know? Think of a doctor and someone giving birth. Different ways, different things happen, different breaches, different, and you're just there to assist this person to be born again. Does that help? Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. So would you say that if, you know, somebody, if, if you can tell that maybe they're dealing with, if they're hanging on to something, they have a little bit of bitterness, is that still, is that kind of in the repentance stage? Like, you still need definitely, to know? I would definitely yeah. tell them. If they're not, if they're, if they haven't received the Holy Ghost, and, that, and that's what you've discerned, hey, and, and there's ways to do it without calling. You don't want to call people out. There's ways to say these things without go down the list. And I would be smart and start with something that you know they don't have an issue in. Right. Hey, God can forgive you of anything. It don't matter if it's lying, gossiping. If you're bitter about something, God can forgive you. Just have, you know. Right. And it's all about how you do it, as right. not really what, but how you're doing what you're doing. Any other questions? I love questions. Oh, not from the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> this might be a, a collaboration. Um, so, at some point, there there was a brother here, and he was seeking the Holy Ghost, and we were praying. And right before that. He would fall out in the spirit. So someone, another minister mentioned that he has seen that happen in the past for whatever reason, either they're scared or they wanna they don't want to go to the next step, or they might be holding on to something, and so they they don't get to speak in the Holy Ghost, but they fall out of the spirit. So just wondering if there's some feedback or conversation, how to I don't, know, I don't even know if you want to prevent it. I mean, well, people are saying in the I, spirit, but they still have never spoken in the tongues. I would, next opportunity, be it when they get up, you know, if, if we're still going to continue to pray, yeah. or another time, or a later date, I would definitely stop them and talk to them. 
and explain what happened. It's the only initial evidence. It's not falling out, yeah. but it's receiving the Holy Spirit. You know, I'll explain that, and I'll explain that what you're feeling, that's great. That's an outward expression. That's great. Uh, but here's the goal. Yeah. Right? To kind of redirect. Not saying, I need you to talk in tongues, but more so, um, that's good, but if you can stay awake long enough, God, God will feed you with the Holy Ghost, you know? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's a way to do that. There's a way to do that. But I, but I think you have a conversation at that point, as opposed to continue, because they'll be falling out to now Jesus comes, yeah. just like chattering, and we'll still need the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So I think you stop them, or after that happens, I say stop them, I don't know not when it happens, <laughs> but uh, before church, or while they're praying, and you sense they're fixing to go into this yeah. stiff as a board thing and fall over, uh, Benny Hinn style, you know, stop them and say, listen, I'm going to tell you something. Here's where you're at. And if you'll just kind of calm them back down and let them go again, you know, try to break gas, break gas to see, yeah. you know. Um, like I said, cause every, every situation is different. Every, as many personalities are in here, that's just how, how different each of you might receive the Holy Ghost. And God, you know, and, and here's the thing. God's going to help us with this. It, yeah. God's wanting to, this to happen, right. you know. Yeah. But as I started in the beginning, just about everyone received the Holy Ghost with someone around. And so if this church is going to get full of people with the Holy Ghost, you're going to be the folks that are going to be around. So we want to know how to give birth to the, you know, to the Holy Ghost. I hope that helps, sister. I don't know if that's what you're looking for or not, but. Any other questions? He Brother Daniel told me to have all day, so give me some questions. <laughs> um, I got one. Um, I'm still kind of like getting comfortable with doing altar calls and praying for people. And I've had some people I'll go up and kneel down with them, touch them, and it just flows. It's just awesome. natural, just comes right on out. I don't have to even think about it. Yeah. Then I've had some people I go up and touch them, and it's just like they're so stoic, they get nothing. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just like, I, I feel like I'm stupid up there. I don't know what to say or what to do. It's like I, I just go. Well, you have to be careful. Always be careful. These are babies. If someone's there and their attitude, they're not going to speak, they're not going to say anything, understand this. I would say, you know, let them know you're there. I'm praying with you. you know, I just touched your shoulder. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Praise you. Just touch my friend. God bless him. And if we're trying to get him to that point where he speaks, let him know. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Just talk to God. Open your mouth. Tell God you love him. Talk to him like we're talking right now. You know, something like that. And in some cases, if they're not, it may take a couple of services or a couple of altar calls before they get comfortable enough to do that. Don't trip out. It's okay. It's a process sometimes, you know. Just like what got them to the altar. They might have come to service a few times before they came to the altar. Now they might go to the altar a few times before they open their mouth and make it. Thank God that they're there. Like I said, be eager to pray with them, ready to pray with them, excited to pray with them. But don't push nothing. Don't force nothing. When he's ready, he'll open his mouth. He hears what you're saying. He ain't crazy. You know, he hears you. But let him know. It's okay to let them know. Talk to God. He wants to hear your voice. He right. loves you. He knows what you're thinking, but he wants to hear you say it. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's been certain times where I felt to go pray for someone, but whenever I get up there, the only thing is speaking in tongues. Like, that's the only thing that will come out. I don't know if there's words. Is it still conducive to just stay there when there's maybe for other people, or to kind of back away and, well, and pray from a distance. You're super sensitive to the Holy Ghost, number one. I think I told you that. But you're like, you know, the deposcopes, what they call them. <laughs> You're one of them. You're super sensitive to the Holy Ghost. And you're probably, I think I told you this to your intercessor. And so it, the Holy Ghost hits you. Gets your, now, if ain't nobody praying with them, it follows your life. Again, the Spirit is subject to you as far as that goes. You, you should be able to turn that off. Um, to get business done. Now, ideally, your job—I I, don't—I think you're fine up here praying with them 
if there's someone else that's leading them in repentance and praying with them, I think you're, you're just fine right here praying with them. If all you do is speak in tongues, like I say, that creates the atmosphere that we need. We want them speaking in tongues. You need to be able to speak in tongues. We want the Holy Ghost to flow, right? Uh, just as faith is is imparted and whatnot, uh, we, we, want, we want that. So I, I would say, I mean, God can go long distance. He did it over the phone. I promise you. You know, you can be back there. But if, if if it was my altar call and the Holy Ghost is moving, I would want you up there with them. Definitely. Uh, but if no one's up there to lead them, be spiritually mature. Uh, spiritual maturity is huge. Huge. But be spiritually mature enough to know. Because when you speak in tongues, what are you doing? You're edifying yourself, right? You know, I'm just let you know. Okay, well, we don't need you edifying yourself. I ain't talking about travail and, and intercession and all these things right now. But if you're just speaking in tongues, you're speaking in tongues. Well, it's great that you're super spiritual. But this person needs the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Have enough spiritual maturity to turn that off and focus on business. That's how I, I look at I look at this as th this is as serious as it gets. This is all, almost military, militaristic. This is also uh, almost like a, I mean, this, this is it. This, I, I can't put the emphasis, I can't find the word right now. This is huge. Right. The altar call is the most important thing you're going to do. Yeah. And so we have to know what we're doing. We have to have a, a plan in place. You know, if you have greeters and you have people who clean the church, you have musicians, all these, it's all great. But man, when a sinner comes in here and they're seeking the Holy Ghost, this needs to be where we're strong at. Amen. This needs to be where the bread and butter is. I don't know why I said that. Have you asked any questions? He's from we didn't leave her at all. He lived by okay. her. We just like, we knew if like the atmosphere was not how you help create that atmosphere. Like the preaching didn't exactly hit them. They are seeking and they come up. There's been a couple times. In fact, I think even here last time that I was here, uh, altar service went on a good minute. Someone was seeking the Holy Ghost and it kind of died down. You can yeah. feel it die down. It kind of get quiet. I always, sometimes I grab the mic, whatever. I, I encourage people. Let's create an atmosphere of praise and worship, such as this, this this young man is seeking the Holy Ghost. Somebody praise the Lord. Lift your voice. Come on. Yeah. Uh, usually as a preacher, they'll mimic what you do. Yeah. You watch Anthony Emmanuel when he starts clapping, everybody just starts clapping. Mm -hmm. yeah. The church will get with it. And and being that you're obviously on the ministry team, you're here today, um, it's your job to, yeah. to make sure that stays up here, that that level's up here. Because, uh, you know, like I said, when that dude praying is the loudest thing in the building, you know, and he, he hears people gathered up in the back talking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they'll just take the wind right out of it, you know. So we don't want that. Uh, the whole reason for everything is this. Yeah. This all, this, this, this up here. I always give an altar call. When, I, when I'm pastoring, every service, the altar is always open because you never know what people's going through. You never know this might be their last opportunity. Who knows? So the altar call is always open and that means you have to always be ready to work the altar. And it's called working the altar because it's work. It is not easy all the time. I mean, you'll leave sweating, you know. It's a job. But it's important. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Comments? If you have concerns, just fill out the card and put in the box in the back. <laughs> Anything else? Pastor. Let's give the Lord a hand and clap. Thank you. Oh, you been left out. One of y'all stand on one side. Say, hold on, hold on. The other one's stand on the other side. Say, like, I included that. No, yeah, you yeah, did. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, um, real quick, uh, one thing you just got on is um, the, the conductive of the spirit, the conduit. Um, it, it's easy once you've been praying for a while and you feel physically drained a little bit. Oh, yeah. Because <coughs> you're feeding into somebody. 
what you've got to realize is you may back up, but you're, you, you haven't retired. Okay? You, you still, you're still responsible for the atmosphere in the church. So continue, continue, I plead to you, please, continue to pray. Continue to, to call out and seek the face of the Lord and pray for it. Because even if somebody else is taken over, you can't just go and stop. We've got to keep that elevation, like he said. Um, also, and, and this is big for me, okay? This is where I'm at. I've been saying this for a long time. Do me a favor, and I don't mean this rude. I love all y'all sometimes. Uh, but if you got something to repent over, I really need you to repent before you get to church. Seriously, not being rude. Uh, I know we all struggle, and I'm not saying never come to the altar. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying if you're in the ministry team, I really need you to repent before you get to church. As a matter of fact, just don't do anything that you need to repent over. It's going to be easier that way. Okay? But if you got something, you know, I'm going to get to church and I'm going to get the oil. Man, take a bottle with you. Okay? Just get it, slap it on, get the Holy Ghost before you come here. Uh, and, and, and so you are ready to minister. Because if I'm counting on you, or, or better yet, there's a soul up here counting on you to be ready to minister, but you got to go over to your corner and pray through for 20 minutes. Somebody can miss what God has for them. We're supposed to be conductive vessels. Okay, you, you've heard me talk about the battle. Yes, we've got a battle in this area. So what? Yeah. This is the battleground. Amen. All right. This is the battleground. I know it's out there. I know we're touching, we're doing, but this is the battle. This, this is what we've been fighting for, mm -hmm. for somebody to come and seek the face of the Lord and repent and be baptized in Jesus' name, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and then to educate them and disciple them and help them Know what it's like to be the baby and grow up. Amen. So, so be ready. Uh, that, that includes attitudes. Right. Amen. That includes attitudes. Amen. If you got an attitude, but you can't wait to go to church to fix it, do me a favor, just fix it and then come to church. Okay? The, these things are so vitally important. So so don't don't get the mentality when I get here, I'll break through and then now, break through, get here, and then be ready uh, already. Because remember, when God comes back, we don't know. We don't, let it blow. You know, so just be ready anyway. And, and that way, we, we don't have to worry about all that. Now, lastly, uh, and, and I, Sister Natalie knows this, and a lot of people first look at her. Um, but I, I'm, I need to say this so that you're not just looking at Sister Natalie on this. If you have a position... And there's something that you're doing during the church service. The priority is what God wants, not what you're doing. Right. Okay. So whether it be Sister Natalie coming off the platform, whether it be an usher, not up, you, ushers, you notice lately? I go in the back and I'm like, mm -hmm. do you know why? Because I need you part of the service, not, not whatever else. Okay. Amen. The only only cautions we need, we got enough eyes in here to make sure if Sister Schiller needs to go downstairs or whoever, that's handled. Lord willing, soon that, that won't even be the issue. Right. But, you know, be conductive to that. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm going to go over one more thing and then we'll shut up. Um, we know our, our territory. We know who and what is here. Okay. So when we're praying for somebody, they're up here. Um, remember to watch who's coming up to pray. Okay? It's like praying for somebody with a demon. You don't pray with them with their eyes closed. Your eyes closed. Right. Dear God in heaven, oh, come out. It's going to come out, but it's going to give you something first. So... <laughs> So, so, so you just don't pray for somebody has a demon that way, right? And, and, but, and the reason I'm saying that is the same thing applies here. If you're praying for somebody, 
in the Holy Ghost and you see somebody that really, and I'm just going to be honest, has no business laying hands on anybody, then do what I've taught in the past and politely shift. Yeah. Fill the void. Mm -hmm. Grab a hold of somebody. Come here. Grab, I mean, if, if, if we're distanced like this and you can see how the corner of your eye, and you guys know me, you see me looking all over the place at times. It's not because I'm schizophrenic, it's because I'm, I'm, I'm surveying the, the, the atmosphere. And, and, and if you got to go, amen, hallelujah, praise God, you know, just, and close that gap to stop from somebody who's got no business touching somebody, that's not being rude, that's being spiritually sensitive, that's being spiritually mature. Um, we've had it in the past, you know, the, the, the witch that came in and tried to, with my wife and then came up here and tried to touch everybody and lay hands on everybody. And mm -hmm. No, thank you. No, thank you. Don't let them touch your kids either. I'm not trying to be rude. Ladies, don't let them touch your hair. First thing they want to do, they want to touch the kids. They want to touch the lady's hair. They, they want to touch somebody praying or they, they want to, let, oh, will you pray for me? Be careful of that stuff. Yeah. Why am I saying this? Because it's coming. Okay? It's coming. Mm -hmm. It's been here, but it's really coming. And I'm not saying worry about that. Be sensitive to that because they're coming to be set free. Yeah. They're coming to get liberty. They're coming. So so just, just be sensitive spiritually. Um, even if you've got to look at somebody and say, mm -hmm. come up here, pray with us. We need to build a wall. Yeah. I just have a question, more of a comment. What Pastor is saying is be sensitive spiritually, but also be aware. And there's been many times where our pastor or brother Paul, when he was here last week, tells you, go pray for this person. Are you so also, yes, be praying and be in tune with the Lord, but also look at our ministers and look at our leaders and open your eyes and say, okay. Yeah. Like, walk to your pastor whenever he's telling you, go Could pray you here, go closely That's back between go. this person. So just, yeah, there's, just one thing that I there's people I'm, I'm trying to get their attention, yeah. like, yeah. you know, <laughs> I see you, so I'm not saying don't pray, but open your eyes, <laughs> you're part of the ministry team, that's why I said pray through before you get here, right. that yeah. way you're prepared, because if you're a I'm like, dude, go, come on, let's just, I can't be everywhere. Get go over there, you know, uh, or or something else is happening. So so just kind of get in the process to learn and grow. You guys are doing fantastic. I really appreciate y'all coming this morning. Yes. Um, just a little reminder. I know we already do this, but when our pastor, the minister, calls for an altar call, he says, you know, come, let's repent, or who needs the Holy Ghost? Well. Again, somebody who needs the Holy Ghost is going to be a little bit embarrassing to be the only person who gets mm -hmm. up yeah. and walks all the way from the back, all the way to the front, so everybody is staring at them. It's very unlikely that somebody would do that. Yeah. So stand up. Like, stand up and support the whole congregation, support the whole spirit right. and, and the atmosphere. Let's create it. Let's walk up there. It's not necessarily because I need to repent or you need to repent, but we don't want them to think, mm -hmm. I'm embarrassed to go up there. Okay, I'm not embarrassed anymore. We're all we're all walking up. Yeah. There. We're all if if up. you're if you're looking around to see who goes first, yeah. you're already last. Mm -hmm. Just get dude, up, this should be get instinct. Up, but you know what I mean? Yes. At some point this has got to be instinct. Oh, yeah. altar call. No, I'm gone. I'm, I'm up. Yes. But that doesn't mean right. again yeah, get down and shit. close your eyes and stay there for 30 minutes. No. And right. it just means get up here and begin again right. to create an atmosphere. Right. That, that's, uh, allow it. Yeah, whoever. Oh, go ahead. Um, and our, our church is sometimes, the ministry team is always outnumbered, let's just say, like that with newcomers, right? Sure. So we have to teach. It's a teaching church, mm -hmm. and they don't know. They don't know how to pray. They don't know that you should come up to the altar. They don't know that you should lift your hands. All these things we know, right? And it's our, our nature to just do it. But it's also teaching. They're going to see by what they're learning from us. Yeah. So when you go up there, lift up your hand and pray. 
and it, it doesn't mean you're going to stay, like Pastor said, don't right. stay doing that, you know, on your knees and, and, and with your eyes closed where you're not actually working the altar anymore. You're praying, which yeah. we should have done that before either we get here or we get here way before prayer time and, and have our own prayer time. Yeah, now you're getting to know what we're going to get into. Yeah, I say in the midst of doing that, be aware that we're not taking up the whole area. <coughs> Yeah, if you're growing one area, yes. doesn't, yeah, spread out. Yeah. Get no. room. Don't also, block the house. something that's super important, some people like to stay right here, and they block the, they block the way, and they also block the Holy Spirit super high because it we're running. That's what we call it. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, people can't run, and yeah. I'm looking, and it's like, well, I'm not even, I can't, I can't, because yeah, exactly. there's yeah. four people there. Be like Cameron, just run through them. <laughs> oh, we have we have jumped over people, oh, yeah. but like, we can also. My <laughs> brother Steve, also, he's done. Huh? <laughs> we can also be conscious about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and, and so just just kind of be aware of those things, sensitive to those things. It's very good. Thank you. Um, don't forget, um, your ministry is as important to this church as. Amen. Okay, there's no small Amen. and big. Okay, we're all on the same plateau. We're all on the same work, Amen. and and communication, communication, communication. Yes. Okay, now there's two more things I want to go over. Number one, your face says a lot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did you burp? Did you smell something? What's the face for? Okay. Chillax, all right? Yeah. Get your face under control. Because if you're speaking in tongues, but your face ain't. <laughs> I'm talking about I'm talking about both times. Who stole my hand? No, it doesn't work that way. So 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 get get your facial expressions under control. If you don't like something, okay, don't show everybody. All right. Amen. Okay? It's like I'm gonna tell on you guys, you ready for this? Every time I go like this, every man in this church goes. Turn around and see you. Yes, they're doing it, they see me. I've done this because somebody was back there, not because I wanted to make signs in the air. For those of you who don't know what that means, it means shut off the live feed. But every time I do that, now everybody, all the men go. To the point to where the last time I preached, I went, yes, there's somebody back there. You all can pay attention up here now. Yeah. Because it's just so distracting. Yeah. It's just so distracting. So, you know, your face and your actions can either add to or take away. Yeah. Because, believe it or not, it's hard to preach up here and give a direction and everybody turns around. Well, now that person's looking back there too to what happened to make yes. these guys turn all the way around yes, sir. Mm -hmm. the, the, so so keep your mentality on the things of the lord watch your facial expressions remember it's, it's at work you don't tell all the tales you're so concerned you don't want to react to things so you keep your face somber on stuff right so here i'm not looking for to be somber but being in the spirit and, and don't 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 let yourself get tied into something okay we realize there's going to be actions and reactions to church. There's people here. Things are going to happen. So, but let's let's try and keep our mentality and our expressions and our actions. Notice when I pray, I say, God, help, help. Well, you don't hear me, but before I get up on the platform, every time I pray, even if it's just in Jesus' name, before I step on that platform, okay? But one of the main things that I, that I say is, Lord, I'm asking you to take over my actions Amen. and my reactions Amen. every time because I, I, want, I don't want to do anything that's outside of the nature that God is asking me to, to fulfill. Does that make sense? And just to add on to what you're saying, that kind of also goes with the words in the back. If the words aren't up there at the right oh, yeah, time, yeah. turn around and look. Yeah, just the words aren't up there for a reason. 
I mean, she's talking about it. If they're changing, if it's time for them to change, yeah. and they haven't changed yet, like, don't everyone turn around and look for them? No, no, that's my point. Yeah. They're not up there for a reason. Don't worry, we still have it under control. Because if they start shouting, and you're mad because the word hasn't changed, and you yeah. go and you give them that constipated look, it's over for somebody. Yeah. Okay? Go get your Pepto Bismol, whatever you need, and move on. So, yeah. but, but it's okay. We got it under control. Not everything's going to be perfect all the time. And if they started shouting, by golly, that's what we needed in the first place. Amen. Okay? So, so thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, anything like watch your actions and watch your reactions. Um, and, and, and any other questions on any of that? Okay. So, let's all stand. I, um, I've said it since we've been in New Wash, when we couldn't find anything in Charlestown, and the Lord had us in New Wash, first in the living room, then in a swamp pole building. I, I questioned the Lord, asked my wife, I was really burdened. And saddened. Lord, why? Why are we here? Why are we not in Charlestown? What's you called us to Charlestown surrounding here? Why are we not there? And the Lord said, Because you're not ready. You're not ready. I'm like, what do you mean? He says, the spiritual warfare. I mean, out there we had some intense spiritual warfare. Always had witches digging up my front yard. Really irritated me. Always had people coming on the property, very irritating. And 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 then just to have people prejudice. He married a Hispanic chick. Did you know he's married? And being rude to my daughters. Yeah, I almost lost the whole lives. But like, you know what a gun looked like? You know what a big gun looked like? Go ahead, my, my wife and daughter, one more time. Because you won't finish the sentence. Yeah, it was hard. Thank God the Holy Ghost kept a hold of us, right? We've experienced it. But we were not ready for the spiritual warfare or the souls. Flat out. Sometimes God puts us in places 100% to learn and mature. And we were not ready for what is coming. And that is why this year we're changing things drastically. Okay? And that's because we don't have a choice anymore. We're, the Lord says, we're there. We've come a long way. You guys are phenomenal. Don't get me wrong. But there's things that we're going to have to face very quickly that are going to require us to be proper altar workers and proper spiritual warfare and in the office and the callings that each one of you are called and chosen for, okay? And it's gotta be in unity. It's gotta be in unity. That's why there can no longer be little chiefs. There's either a chief or there's nothing, okay? So we're gonna work in unity. We're gonna do it God's way. So every time, every time you get outside of that, you're wrong. Amen. Amen. You guys good? Yes. You love one another? Yes. Turn to the person next to you. That's all I wanted. I just want to see if you did it. Uh, <laughs> all right. Brother Cameron, close us in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this fellowship we had to be able to come here to learn, to be edified, to understand what it takes and what we need to do as we glorify your kingdom and work for you here today, Lord. As we go further and deeper in you to reach that next level, as Brother Chris Paul was, had preached on the revival, Lord, help us to keep what we learned here today, to apply it to where we go in our life here for you, Lord, for your kingdom, not for our glory, but for your, your glory, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, listen, that wasn't weird. Y'all don't know it. Every time we go live for the AIM Indiana District Jesus Talk, 
Brother Cameron comes up with these proper words. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How are you this lovely, monstrous day? <laughs> we are grateful to have you here in the abode of the sanctuary. <laughs> so last time we did it, I just stopped. I'm like, doesn't it get weird? Doesn't it get weird when the camera goes on? And they're all like, he really does. It does get weird. So we stop for a minute. And he goes, and, and he's like, how are you all this last? And see, he's doing it again. <laughs> Breathe. Just be yourself. Relax. So love you guys. They're still doing us downstairs. We're going to run up the road and get something to eat. We haven't decided where yet, but we'll let you know. But uh, we'd, we'd love it if everybody could come and, and be part and all that. And then we're going to give Brother and Sister Paul what, what, what they've never realized they needed more than anything. And that's so much needed rest. <laughs> no no one knocking on the door, no one bothering them, just, just let them have their evening full of rest. Amen. Amen. So so we're all going to get some lunch if they feel like it, and then uh, just, just leave them, and then they'll be with us tomorrow. But have a great time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Excited about it. Now, before we leave, give me, can you give me two more minutes? Sure. Good, I'll take five. Have a seat. <laughs> you guys haven't heard this testimony. And I don't want it to go outside this church. I got to tell Brother Paul a little bit ago. You all, I don't know if you know, Brother and Sister, Sister Nelson came Sunday. You know, the devil ripped my shirt. You said you wanted a testimony and you didn't want it to be. Yeah, I don't want everybody to know. Somebody is recording. Yeah, stop. I mean, okay. Will you go stop the back one like run? Somebody ripped my shirt. 